Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring you your retrospective on UFC Fight Night Dos Santos versus Ngannou. Not the greatest result for us uh, here tonight. We went 5-6 and six on the evening, but let's get into the fights themselves. Here's the show. <laughs> Starting out with our main event, we took an L on this one. So we were not able to correctly predict Junior Dos Santos defeating Francis Ngannou because Ngannou was the one that got it done. When this fight opened up, I thought that Dos Santos looked all right. Um, Ngannou kind of surprised me a little bit by coming out with leg kicks of his own. But then we see Dos Santos come back and basically cripple the big man by kicking him right in the leg, kind of going, hey, you know, if uh, you want to kick me in the leg, I can kick you too. And Kind of a wonderful little tit for tat there. You know, ultimately though, what ended up happening is, you know, Junior Dos Santos, I think he felt like he needed big power shots to hang with Nganu, and he way overextends with the right hand, and Nganu catches him, turns him around, punches him from behind. Uh, in fact, in that overextension, he got him right behind the ear as he was coming with an overhand right. And uh, he gets him on the ground, a little bit of ground and pound, ref calls it, or, or eh, not early, I mean, it, it was just quick into the round, and uh, Ngannou ends up getting it done. So, I mean, hey, could Junior have beat him? Who knows? Those leg kicks, those leg kicks from Dos Santos did look pretty devastating against Ngannou because he was so heavy on his foot, but ultimately Dos Santos makes a critical error with that overextension and comes away the loser here tonight. It is what it is. Uh, got to take an L on that one. In our next bout here, we had Juicy A. Formiga taking on Joseph Benavides in what was a great flyweight matchup. Somebody phoned Dana White because Benavides deserves that 125 title shot, assuming they even want to keep the division going. He looked amazing here last night. Um, There was really nothing Formiga did that looked scary. Benavides was so just scramble heavy. Every time this thing got to the ground, Formiga was not able to impose any element of control, and Benavides looked much better on his feet. He was able to hang with Formiga on the ground. In fact, every time they got into an exchange, it seemed like Benavides got up and into Formiga's guard, which, you know, hey, maybe Formiga's comfortable in guard, but Benavides was playing off him really well. He was able to get back to his feet. He was able to drop shots in and posture up in that guard, and he just looked, like I said, better overall. Uh, So we were happy to call that one. We did get this one correct. In our next fight, we had Damian Maya defeating Anthony Rocco Martin. So in this fight, I had predicted Maya, and that is how things played out. Uh, I thought Maya won the first two rounds pretty handily, but there was really a bad call by the referee. Uh, he, you know, he made a, a weird stand-up decision. I think he he uh, kind of led into or let the crowd decide what what wanted to happen there. And Maya uh, was taken out of his element, even though he had worked to that position, and he was pounding him against the cage. Uh, just, you know, I guess uh, the booze could not be overcome by the ref, and uh, he ended up, like I said, just giving in. Otherwise, Rocco actually looked okay, especially if we get into that third round. In the third round, I thought that it was Martin's all day. I thought that he was dicing up Maya on the feet, and Maya really had no other takedowns to offer. I don't know if he got hurt there. I don't know what happened, but Maya just was not really going and lunging in to get this man to the ground, and when Martin kept it standing, he had the advantage all day like we thought he did. It's just that Maya won those first two rounds and showed why he's probably the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner in the UFC. So ultimately, we did get this one right, though, with Maya picking up the W. In our next bout, we had Roosevelt Roberts picking up an L here, his first loss of his career and a loss for us on the night against Vince Pinchel. And this was a great fight. I just thought Roosevelt Roberts just didn't quite do enough. He was outstruck basically 2-1, to 60-31. to 31. He was taken down a few too many times. And uh, he just did not look good. He Vinchel just looked better basically everywhere. He edged him out everywhere. Uh, you know, Roosevelt thought he could hang. And, and you know, from hell, Pinchel ended up picking up the W here. It is tough. I mean, all the numbers pointed towards Roosevelt. I don't think there's anything I could do to make it point the other way. Sometimes upsets happen. And that's what we saw here tonight with Pinchel picking up the W. In our next matchup, not too much to say about this one. Drew Dober defeats Mark Polo Reyes. We had Polo Reyes. Uh, as the winning fighter here, but he ended up taking an L. Uh, like I said, not much to say either. He did get knocked out at one minute, seven seconds in. I thought they, you know, looked pretty even on the feet, but Drew Dober just connects with that great power shot, puts uh, Reyes down, and that's that's pretty much all she wrote uh, with him picking up the W. He's on a great tear right now for this lightweight division. It'll be interesting to see who Dober gets matched up with next. 
uh, with his next fight. But hey, either way, we did pick up an L, and it is what it is. In our next matchup, one that we did pick up a W on, though, Alonzo Minifield defeats Paul Craig. So I don't like picking against Paul Craig. I really like the guy, but uh, he just did not look that great against Minifield. His stand-up game was not there, and he kept trying to pressure takedowns, pressure takedowns, and what ended up happening was Alonzo basically caught him while he was, uh, I think, coming in, and a little bit of ground and pound knocked him out. Uh, on his back, on the ground, and uh, Alonzo ends up picking up the W. Great fight, just a murderous puncher. Be interesting to see who he faces next, and I do hope Paul Craig can get back in there and practice some of his grappling techniques and against his next challenger, uh, but he did pick up the L tonight, but we didn't. We picked up a W. In our next matchup, we had Ricardo Hamos defeating Journey Newsom. So I actually had Newsom in this one. It was a very tight margin, but Newsom ended up losing this one. It was a unanimous decision. I thought it was pretty close as far as striking. We had 40 to 38 strikes, uh, but it was those takedowns. Hamos basically had him at will on the ground, and that's ultimately what cemented his victory. In our next matchup, we had Eric Anders defeating Vinceus Morea in what was a pretty good fight. So I thought Morea was going to be able to pressure this thing into the ground a little more than he did, and he ultimately just was not able to. Anders was able to keep it on the feet. He was able to smack him around. He ended up picking up his performance of the night money and getting a great knockout on Vinceus. We knew he had at least, I mean, I thought Vince had at least decent hands to hang with him. Um, but we just proved Eric Anders that Alabama, that former role tighter. Uh, he had the bigger power shots, and he was able to land them tonight, so he ended up picking up the W. In what was a correct call, we had Jared Gordon defeating Dan Murray in another interesting fight. I thought that Gordon and Murray were actually very even. I was a little afraid going into this one. Uh, however, Gordon just proved to outstrike just a little bit more, and uh, I think that uh, his you know he did a little more damage when he did get on the ground. I thought his takedowns were a little more effective than Murray's. And I thought that uh, this ultimately was a good call. However, it was so close on the feet at times that uh, I wondered how this thing was going to go. Ultimately, though, Gordon picked up the W, and I was happy to call it. Uh, there was uh, also some canceled bouts here. So uh, Dalcha Limbagula, I mean, that guy looks scary, but he did not fight Justin Lede, so we can't count that one. Um, but he did look good. I didn't have him winning in the last fight, but hey, maybe that's a good thing that it didn't take place. Then we had Jordan Griffin not fighting Vince Murdoch. That fight was canceled as well. Then in our last two matchups here, we had Amanda Rebus looking really good against the Spitfire Whitmire. Uh, she just looked amazing. You know, I thought of ground skills. I mean, she has some BJJ championships herself, Rebus. So she's definitely deservedly so. She got this submission via rear naked choke in the second round. Um, but even on the feet, I thought that, you know, Rebus looked pretty good too. She outstruck her. Obviously, they landed those takedowns, and Whitmire was ultimately dismantled here in a fight that we were able to call correctly. However, in our last matchup, we were not able to call the Albini Green matchup with Albini picking up an L here. He lost 3 minutes, 38 seconds into the fight. I thought that Albini looked okay. He did a little bit of damage to Maurice himself. He had some okay strikes, but ultimately, Maurice basically outstruck him almost 2-1 to one and was able to land bigger power shots ultimately and pick up the W himself, giving us an L on the night. So like I said, 5 and 6, not really our best work. Um, I've been redoing this metric over and over again and, and kind of trying to come up with different stuff and um, I don't know. I think we're, we're just kind of, kind of a bad streak at the moment. You know, I haven't really performed to those same levels that we were doing a few weeks back, and I'm not really sure what happened. I keep trying to find solutions to the problem, and they're, they're just not speaking to me. So um, I'm just going to keep working at it. I'm going to keep trying to correct. i got a kind of a new idea I'm working on. I'm not sure it's going to be implemented next week or at all, but uh, – yeah, so we'll, we'll just have to uh, maintain what we're doing, and we'll carry forward. Hopefully, we'll just get a little bit better luck. Luck plays a factor for all of these things. I mean, fighters, uh, you know, odds makers, pickers, everything. Luck is definitely a factor. All right, let's talk to, actually, we have a mailbag. Let's get to the mailbag. All right, so Eric writes to us, Hi, Jay. Nganu seems to be an anomaly. He has incredible power and seems like if he can touch you, that he can transport you to the next dimension. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not doubting what you're saying there at all. That being said, have you seen a trend in a competitor's ability to upset the odds? Do you think that would be a potential metric that you could provide and affect your algorithm? Just some shower thoughts. Yours truly and deeply a loyal fan. Well, thank you very much for writing in. I always do appreciate that. I actually like the mailbag is portion of the show probably the most. It's just, uh, <laughs> you know, just don't really have too many people writing in. So, hey, if you are listening to this, please write in. It's like happiest, most 
favorite part about this whole thing. Anyways, um, to answer your question, no, I, I haven't actually seen any kind of trend like that. It's probable that I'm just not capturing it. I, I actually haven't been capturing, um, well, I mean, it's in here. I just haven't looked at it specifically, you know, when a guy defies the odds versus when a favorite wins. Uh, we do know that uh, favorites usually do win. I think if you actually just go ahead and pick favorites, you'll end up getting it right most of the time. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's getting those upsets that are the hardest. And, uh, you know, like last night, I mean, Nganu, I think, was the favorite. Yeah, he was the favorite. He wasn't an upset or anything like that. I mean, he, he, the numbers don't always point to him. It's just that he gets his work done in such a quick, short time. He doesn't build up great stats. Uh, I think is actually what the problem is, you know, <laughs> you know, he, he doesn't land any takedowns, so I can't use any kind of grappling metric for him. He has a lot of power, but so do a lot of other heavyweights. So it, the numbers seem to blur uh, for him against a lot of guys. You know, he, he might be a crazy outlier, but um, I don't have like a, a crazy outlier metric I can provide to everyone that would make sense. So I don't know. I'm not sure that's an answer to your question. Um, but yeah, I, I, the information's in here. I just don't actively track it, I guess is the best way to put it um, when I look at that. Otherwise, yeah, keep writing in. Uh, I do love answering questions. Like I said, it's my favorite aspect of the show. It just happens. Maybe I like it because it doesn't happen that much. I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's go to uh, housekeeping here. So, you can get in touch with the Fighting Spirit Podcast just like Eric did here today at fightingspiritpodcast at gmail.com. You also can get in touch with me on Twitter. I've been posting there a little bit more. Um, so at MMA Fight Picks 01 is my handle there. You're also on Facebook, so you can get in touch with the Fighting Spirit Podcast on Facebook. There's also an Instagram page. Um, eh, I mean, I've been posting to it a little bit more recently, but uh, since a lot of it, you know, obviously has to do with pictures and stuff, I don't actually have a whole lot to post there. Mostly Twitter and Facebook because they're text based, but there's been a little bit of stuff to Instagram the last couple of days. Um, especially last night, I, I did a, I did a whole kind of thing. If you start on uh, Facebook, sorry, if you start on Twitter, it's also on Instagram. So go look me up if you wonder what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. So, anyways, let's uh, let's just wrap this up here. I will be back, of course, on Tuesday with your fight picks for the big one: John Jones taking on Tiago Santos in what should be an interesting fight. Uh, for sure. We know Tiago has that great knockout power, but John Jones, I mean, I'll just say it now, you know, he has all the numbers in his favor. You know, anything crunch with John Jones in it, I think it's always going to point towards John Jones. And the only way somebody's going to beat him is that just kind of puncher's chance, like we saw Gustafson do to him way back in the day. But I will be back with all of those UFC 239 predictions on Tuesday. Uh, absence of John Jones, who was revealed here right now. But you guys kind of knew that, right? I mean, does anybody think that john jones is gonna lose right pico jones it just ain't happening right maybe it will happen maybe that's why it will happen nobody thinks it will i don't know anyways there's the uh the uh, tiago Santos is a great uh underdog actually if you want to put money on this thing he's like a plus 600 or 400 or some, something like that in fact i think jones is a minus 600 uh and uh santos is a plus 400 so four to one payout not too bad if you want to throw potentially some money away but there's good odds on it i'm rambling though anyways i will talk to you again soon until then happy fight picking